Hello and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we'll talk about the top 10 elections to watch this year. Okay, I know that this is a little late. Like we are in March already, like almost a third of this year is already over. However, I think it's still good to, you, to, you know, make a video about, you know, elections that you should watch this year. So let's get straight into it. Number 10, Israel. Um, I would actually put this a little higher, uh, like a lot higher, but 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 I don't because um, Israel is in a very inst unstable political situation right now. They have had three elections in the past two years. This will be the fourth one, um, and if you watched like my you know elections to watch in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty videos. You'll see that I mentioned Israel there, um, and I, I don't think like that they will like change something right now. I mean, they have like new parties, like new parties rose up. Um, specifically, there was the New Hope party, and yeah, Yamina is also becoming more popular. Um, yeah, you have these parties now, and if I'm not mistaken, there was one more. Um, Essentially, like, those are, like, right-wing, pro-one-state solution parties who yet um, oppose Netanyahu. Um, you know, if you didn't know, um, back in 2019 and 2020, in the free elections before, um, there, the reason why, like, nobody could form a coalition or a government because of, because, was because of one guy named... Um, Lieberman, okay, Lieberman, you know, everyone thought that Netanyahu will, like, you know, make a coalition with him, and, like, um, you know, I actually was one of the only people who doubted that, like, I remember people telling me, oh, you, you are, like, a little kid, you don't understand politics, uh, because, you know, I was saying that, that Lieberman won't, form a coalition with, Net with Netanyahu and like later he didn't form one and then people were like really shocked and w w well I was laughing at them well anyway um yeah I believe that um Lieberman will keep being like uh, in this very stubborn position where he doesn't form a government with anyone um, yeah, and then, you know, you, you have these new parties, and those right-wing anti-Netanyahu parties. Um, I think that corruption will play a very big role in this election, um, because um, they claim to be, like, anti-Netanyahu. However, I believe that they, that they will, like, join a coalition with Netanyahu. I believe that, like, they're only being anti-Netanyahu to get votes. So, I believe that they're pro-Netanyahu, secretly. Um, yeah, if, if, it, if, like, corruption won't, like, play a role here, then, yeah, this election will be, like, an another, you know, failure. Like, they will make a new election a few months later again. And this, you know, th this will just keep repeating until, you know, the end of humanity. I mean, it's they, they 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 are just making new elections all the time because they can't form governments. It's 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 kind of sad, hilarious at the same time, and kind of good because you know Netanyahu is is not like being reelected right now, and like um yeah. But anyway, we we talked enough about like the right wing parties. Now let's talk more about like uh, you know the pro two state solution parties. Um, among them we have um, Blue and White, and there is also Yara Lapid's party, yeah, Yara Lapid. Um, basically, um, Yara Lapid denounced, like, Benny Guns. Benny Guns, if you didn't know, used to be, like, the number one enemy of, like, Let of, like Netanyahu. And, like, um, essentially, he later formed a government with... Netanyahu, the temporary government. Essentially, when COVID started, um, Netanyahu and many guns wanted to set aside their, you know, differences, and like you know, um, 
for that reason, to keep stability, they formed a temporary coalition, a temporary government. And now since, and now since like quarantine and all that is over, like they're making this new election, and yeah, like Benin Guns doesn't want to be part of Netanyahu's government anymore. Yet, um, to Yara Lapid, the leader of Yesh Atid, was that was still treasonous. That was treachery to him. You know what I mean. Um, other than that, we also have other parties. Like you know, we have um, the all these Arab parties. To give a few examples. Um, there there is Merit and Ram. Then there is also. Labor. That's not that's not in the Arab parties, but it's still worth mentioning. Um, essentially, the Arab part. I mean, the 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 Labor Party was like the main opposition against Netanyahu before, but like their leader essentially put the like he destroyed their party, so they lost a lot of popularity. And now Yarl Lapid and Blue and White like are the 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 main position. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. And there is also Lieberman. It, it, it depends. Um, Lieberman it has a very weird two-state solution. I, I don't even want to talk about that. That's, he, essentially, he wants to give, you know, he, Palestinian territory, I mean, Arab territories of Israel to Palestine. And um, he wants to take, like, Israeli settlements in Palestine to Israel. It's it's just a mess. <laughs> well, anyway, um, yeah, uh, essentially corruption will play a very big role in this election, um, possibly. Well, anyway, but I believe that um, just nothing will happen. Like, you know, I believe that they will make an, a new election again. Okay. Anyway, next up is Honduras. Yeah, Honduras is number nine this, on this list. Okay, why did I choose Honduras at all? you know, uh, on this list. Well, they, they, you could, you could argue like that Honduras is not really, you know, democratic. Like, if you look at their past elections, uh, um, you'll see that this party called the National Party of Honduras, Partido Nacional de Honduras, um, that it, um, you know, that it is in power for a lot of years, like, if I'm not mistaken, for, like, decades, like, for 16 years, they're in power, and the last time when they lost an election, okay, not 16 years, but, like, the last election where they didn't, where they weren't election, where they weren't elected was 16 years ago, and then, and in that election, 2005, the Liberal Party of Honduras, Partido Liberal de Honduras, came to power. And um, I believe that, you know, this isn't kind of democratic. They, like, they were influenced a lot by the U.S., but, but, but like, their influence. So, you know, you could argue that this is essentially U.S. puppet at this point. However, I still think that it's um, worth, worth, like, watching the election between um, the National Party and this relatively new party that was founded just 10 years ago called Liberty and Refoundation, Libertad y Refundación, and also PINO, or in other words, Innovation and Unity Party, Partido Innovación Unidad, y Unidad. Um, essentially, um, they, they are like head to head, to head. um, like in the last election, um, it, it, um, the national party only won by 1%, and I believe it will be even closer this time, and I hope that the, um, this, you know, Liberty and Refoundation and, and other party will win, they, they're like a united party. Um, they, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, they are, um, like democratic socialists. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Okay, maybe not. No, they are not democratic socialists. They are social democrats. 
However, I still like them because they are anti-imperialist. You know, they don't want US imperialism. They will resist it, you know. And there is this, you know, Partido Nacional de Honduras, um, which is like, you know, just the US puppet. And uh, like, you know, there was this election in Honduras, like, tw you know, four years ago. It's called, no, it, it happened in 2017. Essentially, this was a very controversial election because, you know, they, they, there was like a 1% difference in the turnout of the election and like you know you know and the US kind of interfered in it you know they interfered in it you, you know I think that they should just get rid of this you know National Party of Honduras party which is the US puppet and this election could do exactly that all right, let's move on to the next election. At number eight, we have the um, 2021 German federal election. Um, I put this pretty low because, I mean, like, I think we know who will win already. Um, <laughs> oh my god. With, with the CDU, CSU, having pledged not to work with either before. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. This is horrible. What is this? Oh my god. Yeah, this was the, you know... I just noticed that. That was the 2017 election. Well, anyway, essentially what makes this election so interesting is that Merkel is not a leader anymore. Um, if you look in, back at the past elections, you will see that she has been in power for a very long time. Oh fuck, my internet has died. Okay, oh, yeah, it works now. Um, there you go. Um, you, you you see that you know that Merkel has been in power for a very long time. She has been in power for sixteen years, or uh, almost sixteen years. She was elected in twenty in two thousand and five. Um, and yeah, so this will be a very big game changer. This election because Merkel won't be in power anymore. Um. Also, what I'd like to mention is that it's kind of funny how, you know, people accuse Russia of being like an authoritarian dictatorship, whereas Merkel, like, you know, because Putin has been in power for, you know, 17 years, uh, I'm not including 2008 and 2020, uh, 2000, 2012, because me and video was in power back then, I won't call him a puppet, but anyway, um, Putin has been in power for 17 years in total, and Merkel for 16. Why is nobody calling Merkel a dictator? Because the US favors, you know, its own dictators. Um, Merkel is not a dictator, however, it, this is still funny. Okay, anyway, okay, so this is a very interesting election. You have, you have all these candidates get replaced by other candidates. Like, for example, the CDU. You have a new leader in the CDU. There is, you know, there is Ar Armin La Laschet. Armin Laschet, um, yeah, that, that's a great picture of, of him. Um, he is more conservative than Merkel. Um, he is like a liberal conservative. He's pro-immigration, like, he supported uh, Merkel's immigration campaign. However, he, like, he opposes um, marriage for homos. And, yeah, stuff like that. Um, he's conservative. Um, the, essentially, the, the reason why he came to power, like, why he's not the leader of the CDU is because, um, essentially, when Merkel you know, announced that she will resign, you know, everyone, you know, wanted her to pick a successor, and her, you know, her ch chosen successor was this uh, Anna Gret Karnabauer, something like that. Uh, for, for, yeah, Anna, Anna Gret, Anna Gret Kram Karnbauer. This is what, what she was called, um, 
which was kind of very national conservative, like similar to the AFD, similar to Ellis Vidal. And for that reason, they kind of got rid of her. Because there, there was this entire controversy, controversy in, in, you know, Foringia with, you know, the AFD, FDP and stuff like that. Because of that, they just choose this uh, uh, Armin Laschet guy. Um, the SPD also has gone through some pretty well noticing changes. Martin Schulz, who has been who has been the leader of the SPD for like very long time, you can even say like you know him in uh, like as a spe as a as a very important speaker in the EU Parliament like. 15, 20 years ago, he was a very important politician in the EU and Germany. Yeah, he's gone now. He was replaced by, by this Schultz guy. Um, the yeah, and it's, to my knowledge, he's a neoliberal. This guy, just like the um, the other one, uh, like Schultz. Um, I don't think that like the AfD or the Linke will win. They, if you look at the polls, um. They 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 will show you that um, the CDU will win, but the question is the question is with whom will they make the will will they make a coalition? I'm not quite sure. Um, it might be with the Greens. It might be with the SPD again. It will most likely most likely be with the SPD again. However, this will be kind of close because you see the SPD. Has lost a lot of popularity since the last election. They're they are being raped by the AFD, um, but and by the Gru by the Grüne, the Grüne, um, especially are getting popular because of this uh, environmentalism thing. And you know, Fridays for Future you have this girl called you know, Greta Thunberg. Um, yeah, essentially. They'll have to form a government, but it will be hard to form one, because, you know, according to polls, they could form one, but it will be a very close election, then, a very close one. Um, the thing is, we don't know how things will turn out, so we'll just have to wait and see. But my guess is that a coalition between the CDU and SPD will happen. And maybe the the Grüne, um, the CDU has been becoming more popular since Miracle is gone, especially since this new guy, um, you know, this Armin guy. Well, anyway, yeah, I think that this will be still interesting, despite although we know the winner because you know, we will have a new leader in Germany. Um, yeah, this guy might be termed the new leader of the free world. Yeah, now let's talk about an another election. Um, I haven't studied this election that much, but yeah, this is the Mexican legislative election of 2021. Um, yeah, essentially this will elect political representation for the next Congress of Mexico. And I hope that, you know, the current party, the Social Democrats, will win because they're anti imperialists They are like the Iran of Latin America, uh, whereas Brazil is like the Saudi Arabia of Latin America. Mexico is helping people like Maduro and Morales and Nicaragua and Cuba. So yeah, we should support, so, you know, the Socdemcy. At number six, we have the Dutch general election of 2021. Um, this will, this is actually the election that was the closest to, you know, to the time when this video will be uploaded. It will happen on March, it will happen from March 15th to March 17th, 2021. Um, yeah, I remember when, like, the, this party called the FVD was in the rise, essentially... It was like a new party, new right-wing populist, neo-nationalist party. And like they were dominating the Netherlands. They were dominating, dominating everything. However, at this point, um, the Netherlands has gotten kind of boring because, you know, I think we know the women already because they, they, 
they can just form an election, this VVD party with other, you know, parties like the CDA, D66, and, the, and other parties with which they, you know, formed a government last time. So I doubt that the FVD or PVV will win, or the opposition in general. So yeah, I don't think that there is much to say about this. However, I hope that the PVV and the FVD will make some gains. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for this election. Um, we have to watch how powerful the, you know, PVV and FVD will get. Oh my god, the PVV is so sad. Oh my god. They're losing popularity. They actually, they say this, um... This is the FED. They almost surpassed, you know, the the P P, you know, the the VVD. Yeah. Anyway, sad news. Let's move on to a more interesting election now. This is the most cost election this year, probably. Um, essentially the re oh my god. Well, okay. Anyway. So there are like three parties, small part, three small parties. Okay, they were somewhat big. You have like the okay, basically you have the all the S K D U T S L and top zero nine parties, and they basically united into one party, more or less called the called Spolu. Okay, and um, if you if you look at the graph, there are you know. They're actually pro polling pretty well. They're polling at um, eighteen point six percent, and you know who is polling even better, P A S P A S, which is a liberal part, you know, liberal coalition between a liberal party and called the Pirate and and Mayas in in independence. Starostovie a nezavisli. Okay, uh, yeah, you have these boring parties. The, the what, what, what I you know, am interested more in is Spolo and the SPD. The um Czech SPD, not the German one, is like uh, the neo nationalist party of Czechia, and I have no idea why, but it uh, all the S. National Conservative Party united with liberals. So this hurts to this hurts to see. <laughs> this just hurts in my veins. It's just sad. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, yeah. What I'm most interested in is Polo makes some gains in the SPD. Maybe the SPD and Polo will form a coalition. Who knows? Well, anyway. I, I I don't know, but this is very, you know, cursed in general. Well, anyway, let's move on to the next election. Also, that election, it might make more, it might make Czechia even more national conservative. Um, yeah, and that's what I think is, you know, interesting to look at. The development of Czechia and its, you know, social views and stuff like that. It's relation to the EU. Um... Okay, anyway, the next election, I think this this is the fourth. This is number four, if I'm not mistaken. The Bulgarian parliamentary election. It's not actually that far away from us. Uh, it's a very important election, okay? Um, essentially, you have all these polis. This is, Bulgaria has the most, the biggest amount of, like, you're a skeptic or the very, very least soft Eurosceptic parties. It's it's insane how many, you know, Eurosceptic parties they have. You know, if you if we look at for example a random party okay 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 this one is not it's not, you know, Eurosceptic at all. Um but if you if we look like further like the Bulgarian Socialist Party, which is a social democratic Russophilic party yeah, and by the way, um, Bulgaria has a lot of, like, you know, okay, I don't know why, but 
Okay, just keep in mind that those are social conservatives. I mean, software skeptics. Um, they are, you know, they are Russophilic as well. Um, Bulgaria has a lot of um, Russophilic parties and software skeptic ones. Um, and I believe that this is also very interesting to look at. Um, if you didn't know, Putin even, even offered this guy, I forgot his name, Essentially, he offered the Prime Minister of um, Bulgaria to join the Eurasian Union. So that was pretty interesting. And yeah, the, the coalition of Bulgaria is actually also quite interesting. Their, their government, uh, you know, consists of mainly software skeptic and Russophilic parties. You have like this party called Voilet, it's very nationalist, very Eurosceptic. They in general have very, you know, very, you know, nationalist parties. And I don't know why they're like, making a coalition with GERB, but they are. Um, what I'd like to see, and my internet died again, what I'd like to see is, um, the nationalist parties, the Russophilic parties, do a collection coalition. I mean, definitely they won't make a coalition with the Social Democrats because of their social views. If I'm not mistaken, no, because of their economics. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, economics. I think. Yeah, economics. Um. Yeah, essentially, they don't want to make a coalition with them. A lot of a um. Okay, where where did this transfer me to? Okay, this is weird. Okay, anyway, um, uh, I'd like to see a Russophilic nationalist coalition because that will be interesting. Like, the possibility of that happening alone it will be interesting. By the way, they have this new party called IPM. Um, Ima. Um, it's a very weird party, um, they are, they're gaining a lot of popularity, it seems. They, they are definitely there. Here is the graph. Um, probably there will be just another coalition between, you know, the coalition that there already exists. But however, I think, I believe, I, I want nationalist in the worst vote, to get stronger. Um, the reason why I'm so obsessed with neo-nationalist parties is because I want the EU coll collapsed. I want it down. The EU, you know, is an imperialist power. And if you destroy an imperialist power, you have an imperialist power less. We have to cr think critically. We need to, you know, support. You know, we need to think from an anti-imperialist tactical standpoint, so we need to support those neo-nationalist parties, and in fact, Zizek even also supports them. Well, anyway, it seems like they are indeed g gaining some popularity in the nationalists as well. Um, yeah, it seems, it seems like it. Yeah, anyway, I hope they gain more popularity, yeah, and there is, pre that's pretty much Everything I have to say about Bulgaria. Um, hopefully they will someday leave the EU. Hopefully. Alright, I know, I know, I know. This is not a country. I know, I know. This is part of Great Britain. However, I still think that this is a very important election. Um, it, you know, it's uncertain how it will go out. Um, currently, they have 63 seats. Last time they got... They got 41% of the popular vote in Great Britain. And um, today they are polling at very high rates, sometimes at 50%, sometimes even... Okay, okay, those are old polls. Um, let's look at the new ones. Um, they are polling at a pretty high rate. They are polling at um, 50% sometimes. Okay, is, is this the correct one? Yeah, yeah. 
This is sometimes they're polling at fifty percent, sometimes at fifty two. The S and P, the you know Scottish nationalist or kind of not nationalist party, essentially they want to make Scotland independent. Or they're still hurt about you know losing the referendum a few years ago back in like I think if I'm not mistaken twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen twenty fourteen I think, um yeah they lost the referendum back then making Scotland independent and now the UK wants to leave the EU right you have Boris Johnson do all this stuff and Scotland doesn't like it so they want to leave and they can only do that they can only do that if they have if the S and P like has a super majority in parliament if they have a super majority so a super majority essentially means is is that they can make a government without needing other parties without making coalitions only then a scottish referendum might be possible you know there is this entire you know law thing you know it it, it will count as illegal if they will just do it without the approval of london however um you know, I, I still think that they could, you know, do it. Um, I oppose Scottish independence because, um, you know, I oppose the EU. I mean, sure, they can become independent after the EU collapses. I'm fine with that, but not, but not yet, but <laughs> not yet, because of the EU. If they join the EU, then they will strengthen the EU, and they are not nationalists because. You know, joining the EU is anti-national. They only want to make Scotland independent to be, to join the EU. This is not really nationals. Well, anyway, you have other parties as well. For example, we have Conservatives, the Tories. Um, the Conservatives. Um, yeah, they want to keep the country in. And pretty much everyone wants to. And if, pe if enough people vote for... The S and P, Scotland might might become independent, and it's it will be very interesting. It's a big game changer in politics. That's worth to watch. Um. Also, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, they have uh, an election on around the sixth sixth of May, twenty twenty one. So not even that far away from today, and yeah, we're looking forward. To, to how much you'll gain. We know that you'll win, but we don't know how much, you you, you votes you'll gain, and that's why I'm even mentioning you, because if you do gain a super majority in parliament, which is highly likely, sadly, and Scotland might become independent. All right. Next up is the Kyrgyzstan's, um, the Kyrgyz twenty twenty one. Parliamentary election. Um, what is interesting about it is that um, they have like a presidential election this year, when where um, a new party was elected, which is um, not really as pro-Russia as um, the one which was ousted. Um, this party. Um, oh my God. Um, essentially, this party will now consist will now contest in this election, and if it wins this election as well, the twenty twenty one parliamentary election, then they will have both legislative and executive power. So, um, currently the legislative, um, like the legislative um, power belongs to the Roosevelt. I mean, this guy, uh, you know, the his party, the the Mikin Chil, is also, you know. Um, pro Russia. However, it's not as supportive of Russia of Russia as you know, as you know the Social Democratic Party, for example, which is cool. They want to join Russia. They want to you know join the Union State and all that. They are like um Kyrgyzstan actually before the Ulster was Russia's um second closest ally. I'd say even closer than Kazakhstan. Okay, then we have. Who's, who's that? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, essentially, um, we don't know who will win. I really hope it's the Social Democrats and the Roosevelt's. 
not like the ones who want to draw Russia and stuff like that. So yeah, this is this is what you should look for because this will change the political landscape a lot. It will it might make you know Kyrgyzstan more it might it might make you know Kyrgyzstan go away more from Russia and you know you know come closer to the US even maybe or um it will say the same, we don't know, but yeah, interesting election. Alright, next up, as an honorable mention, I would like to mention Greenland. Greenland will have an election this year in April. Um, and, and also, um, basically, I'm not mentioning it, mentioning it in this list, although it's a very interesting election because um, it's kind of obvious who will win. Um, if you don't know, the Greenlandic National Separatist Parties are, are polling at around 81% as of the last poll. So yeah, they are very popular and will most likely win. So for some people this might be a boring election, but to me it will be very interesting. Because I want Greenlandic independence are strongly supported because of, of anti-imperialism. And by the way, if you did not know, this year, on the 300th anniversary of, you know, da Danish colonial rule in Denmark, they will hold a referendum on, on Greenlandic independence. So, um, I really look forward to, to this referendum. I'm waiting for it to happen for four years already. Like, I remember when, when I first read about this, I was like, oh my god, this is so interesting, but this will take so long. And now, if we are just months away of, of it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it will happen in the summer, around the summer this year, the Greenlandic Independence Referendum. If, of course, the, the, the Greenlandic people will elect, you know, a separatist nationalist government which strives for Greenlandic independence. So yeah, this will be very interesting. Last up, we have at number one, the 2021 Russian legislative election. Um, okay, so, um, according to, you know, opinion polls, United Russia, you know, Medvedev's party, is at a re record time low. They're polling at around 30%. Um, the other parties, so the KPRF, LDPR, Spravedliva uh, Russia, so Fair Russia, and, you know, Patriots of Russia and For Truth, are polling also at around 30%. And then you have other parties, which won't get any seats, and also people who abstained and are undecided. So, out of those that will actually cast a vote, um, you know, it will be then split. Half will vote for you know, Russia and the other half for the other parties. Okay, um, well, what is interesting about this is that, um, yeah, this guy called Sergei Mir Mironov created, um, he created a coalition of parties. He merged, uh, you know, Fair Russia, For Truth, and Patriots of Russia all together. Um, he also um, suggested um, the LDPR and the KPRF to um, unite with each other and with Fair Russia. Um, whether this will happen or not, we don't know. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard because. Um, yeah, they kind of wanted it as well, but they say that their that their programs are too different for that to happen. So we don't know. Um, but I, I hope that they will unite. This is what what's will most likely happen. They will unite, and yeah, then we'll have a gigantic party which consists of everything, or, or at least everything relevant. Except for United Russia, this means that United Russia will have um serious, you know, serious re resistance. It will be seriously resisted, um, and it might lose the election. This will be the first election lost by United Russia since which election? Let me actually look. I don't know. Um, uh, if I had to guess, since around two thousand and three. Let me look. Yeah, that's 
yeah, um, 2003 is the last time, is the first time they were elected, so they've been power for 18 years. Um, they will, they have legislative power for 18 years. Um, and, um, yeah, this election might change that. Um, I believe that the, this gigantic party, you know, this gigantic coalition of parties will beat them. Also, um, what I'd like to mention is that the leader of Russia, Sergei Mironov, promised to build socialism if he wins. He promised to also, he's also pro stone he said, his party as, as well. That's what he said about his, about his party. Um, he supports socialism in the 21st century, so he's a democratic socialist. Um, similar to, you know, the Bolivar the Bolivarianists in, in you know, Venezuela and Bolivia. I don't think that they are, you know, socialists, but however, I do believe that they believe in socialism, and so does this guy. Um, uniting with the Communist Party of the Russian Federation won't be that hard. The, you know, the, the this, this can be kind of compared to, you know, Lieberman in Israel. Um, the LDPR will play the the big role here. Zurinovsky will play everything. There there have been accusations that he will form a um form a united party with you know Russia. I don't, but I don't think that this will happen. He will probably merge with you know with um with the Fair Russia and the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. What this will you know happen is. Up to discussion, but this is very likely, and I hope that this will indeed happen. Well, anyway, if in, in, if in this indeed does happen, then this will be a very big game changer, obviously, since you won't have United Russia in power anymore. Putin's entire government will be gone. However, he will still stay as president. It will be kind of kind of fun, you know, to see a socialist prime minister. You know, you know that w that will be kind of fun. Um, I believe that the compromise candidate Sergei Mironov will actually take over this new party, this new big party, because because of a lot of disagreements be between those two guys. Um, so yeah, th he will be kind of like a compromise candidate, since it will be too controversial to make two, w one of these the leader of this new gigantic party. Well, what is it to say? Yeah, um, th yeah, I think that this will be very great. It will eliminate corruption and stuff like that. Not completely, but, you know. I th okay. I think that this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.